G'day again everyone, welcome back to the vlog. I am at Crown Casino, it is 10 a.m. on a Saturday, starting in probably the earliest time I've ever started one of these vlogs. I'm just trying to get in a good sleeping pattern and getting used to coming to the casino at around this time because when I do play the main event, I'm gonna to have to get to the casino early. Definitely can't be late and losing chips with a tournament that big. So just trying to get in a good pattern now before I play the main event. And while we're here, of course, I'm gonna play a bit of cash game, trying to get towards that 150 hour goal for January. So far, I've got 60 hours logged. So obviously, still have to play a ton of poker to complete that challenge. So let's stop wasting time here and get into the game right now. Let's go. Yo, it's about 8 p.m. here in Melbourne. I'm up back on the Crown rooftop car park, but inside my car this time, taking shelter from the windy conditions outdoors. Wrapped up the session for the evening, only ended up playing 2-5. We do have plenty of interesting hands to go over with you guys, but for the moment, I'm just gonna head home and rest up, but we'll get those hands out to you guys later. G'day again everyone, I am back at Crown Casino. It is currently noon on the Sunday after my 2-5 session yesterday. Unfortunately, did sleep in a bit. It's starting to get further away from that uh, sleeping pattern I wanna maintain going into the main event, but I'm gonna hop in, play a session of 2-5 today. Before I go and do that, we got some hand histories to go over from my session yesterday, so let's hop into it. First hand, a unknown player in the hijack who looks suspiciously like John Cena. He goes ahead and raises it up to 20. Then I am in the small blind with Ace King of Clubs. I go ahead and three bet to 80, and then he calls. So we go heads up to a flop of King 8 4 with two hearts. Pretty good flop for me with my Ace King here. So I go ahead and bet 90, 90, and then my opponent does call. 
and we see it turn, which is the Jack of Diamonds bringing in the backdoor flush draw. The action's on me here, and I think I make a slight mistake here. I actually decided to check. I did want to play a bit of pot control with my Ace King, potentially now, um, but obviously I can still get caught by flush draw. So I think I think betting here might be slightly better play, but checking, even though I do think it's a mistake, not that much of a mistake. I go ahead and check, and then my opponent checks back. We see a river, and it is pretty much the worst river in the deck for me. It is the Queen of Hearts. So obviously a scare card because the front door flush got in. As well, I also lose to King Queen. Very reasonable hand my opponent could call the flop with and check the turn. So I think at this point there isn't much value in betting at all. I just decide to check, see what my opponent does. And they go ahead and bet 125, which is actually a pretty small bet considering the size of the pot here. But I think I should still consider folding very heavily here. Like I said, I lose to King Queen, flushes, even like if my opponent called the flop with Queen 10, suited, something like that, it's possible. If my opponent did bluff, want to like run a bluff here, I think they might just start betting on the turn to try and get me to fold when I show weakness and sort of stabbing on the river. I don't know, it doesn't, it, it, it's, I'm not saying it's impossible, that line is a bluff, but it's just, it would be a bit strange. So I think the right play, even though I'm getting such a good price to call, I should probably just fold this. That's not what I do though. I do throw in the call only to be shown King Queen. So I think calling was a mistake, but I promise I'm not just being results oriented. I think there isn't really any hands that I beat here with my Ace King on the river. So in retrospect, not a great call there. Next hand, I am on the button with nine, six clubs. I make it 15 then the big blind calls. So we go heads up to a flop of Jack 5-4 with two diamonds. Big blind checks it over to me, and obviously I whiff pretty hard here. I do have uh, three to a straight on the board though, so I do have some backdoor draws. So I mix in the light C bet. I go ahead and make it 20. Then the big blind calls. So we see a turn, which is the three of diamonds. Pretty interesting uh, turn card for us. We do make an open-ended straight draw, but front door diamonds do get in. The big blind checks it over to me, and I think it's very possible that my opponent has a lot of flushes in his range taking this line. But having said that, I still kind of like semi-bluffing here just because it'll put a jack in a really, really hard spot. Or if my opponent called with a uh, one pair hand worse than a jack, it's gonna be pretty hard for them to call if I continue to barrel. So I don't get a bit cheeky and mix in the turn, seat, turn buff, I bet 50 and then the big blind calls. So obviously not the result we were looking for. And the river is the three of hearts. The big blind checks it to us again. I think this is a pretty interesting spot, whether I just want to go for the bluff or not. If I continue to bet here, I'm pretty much representing a hand stronger than a jack. So it'll put a jack in a pretty hard spot if I continue to bluff at it. Having said that though, I am somewhat concerned my opponent does have a flush themselves. Maybe that hand would raise the turn though, so maybe I'm be more inclined to try and get him to fold a jack. And that's actually what I decide to do. I go ahead and bet 65, trying to put max pressure on that jack. He hits the tank for probably a good 15 seconds before throwing in the call. Ugh, great. And then he shows jack 10, so probably would take a bet bigger than 65 to get him off jack 10, so obviously we fail on that bluff. Okay, next hand, there is a limp under the gun from a loose passive player. I am in the low jack with ace king. I make it 20, then I get no less than three callers. So we are four ways to a flop of ace nine, eight rainbow. The action checks to me. I go ahead and bet 50 for value, looking to build a pot against the worst ace. Having said that, I do think checking uh, would also be a legit option, but I think betting in this game, probably a better option. I go ahead and make it 50, and then only the original limper calls. So we go heads up with him to a turn, which is the four of clubs, putting out the backdoor flush draw. He checks it over to me again. This turn card's a pretty big, a pretty big brick. Obviously there's still straight draws out there I can get value from. If my opponent does have a worse ace, ace queen, ace jack, etc., uh, obviously I can continue to build a pot against that. Before I go ahead and bet 90 and then he does call. So we are heads up to a river and the river is the ace of spades. And then things get kind of interesting because my opponent decides to lead out 150. 
I don't know if interesting is the right word, actually. I think things get really exciting for me. Obviously, I'm loving this news that my opponent wants to put in more money. I think when they do that, it's very likely that they have um, either a worse ace or a bluff. I think if they did have a hand that's a full house, they would have probably raised on the flop or the turn. So I'm not really concerned about that at all. So I do rip all in over the top for 340, and then my opponent groans, oh God, before calling. Now I show my ace king, and he throws his hand in the muck. So things start to turn around in the session, we rake in that pot. So I am under the gun with ace four of diamonds, I make it 15, and then I get a call from a loose passive hijack and a tight aggressive big blind. So we're three ways to a flop of 984 with two hearts. The big blind checks to me and I just decide to check here with my showdown value and then the hijack checks as well. So we go to a free turn and I'm very glad we got a free turn because it was the four of clubs. So we make the nut trips. When the big blind checks to me again, it's obviously I wanna start betting my trips for value to try and build a pot. Five trips, obviously. I go ahead and bet 30. And then fortunately the hijack does call and the big blind folds. So I'm happy to get some value. We see a river, and the river is the three diamonds. So obviously a pretty bricky card. I think I don't want to continue to bet for value here. It's an interesting sizing spot because like I said, I think if my opponent did have a strong hand, they'd probably just bet it on the flop. So there's merit to betting down to try and give his weaker one pair hands a price to call. But I do also think there is a merit to betting big. And the reason for that I think is, if my opponent did check a strong hand on the flop, like ace nine, something like that, they're gonna wanna call the river, right? Like no matter what I bet, well, not if I go too crazy, obviously, but they'll call a larger bet, right? Because they check the flop, underwrap their hand type thing. So I think it might be a good spot to just go for that large sizing, because if he does have a weak hand, he might not even call the small sizing anyway. So I might as well try and get more value from an ace nine type hand. So I go ahead and bet 90, and then my opponent snap calls. Obviously that's music to my ears. I show the ace four and then my opponent mucks. So interesting sizing spot on the river. I'd be really curious to hear what you guys think. Should I just bet small to try and give those one pair hands a price to call? Or is it a good spot to bump your ace size up and go for max value? Let me know in the comments below. So there is a low jack limp from a tight passive player. And then the same John Cena looking dude in the hijack, who I now have identified as a loose aggressive player. Also a nice guy and a vlog watcher, but definitely a loose aggressive player. He opens the hijack to 20, then the action's on me, on the button, with ace 10 of spades. I think this is already a pretty interesting decision, whether you just call or three bet. I think the better play would be to three bet though, particularly against a loose aggressive player, who's gonna be opening all crazy types of hands. Ace 10 is usually gonna be the best hand here, but I do not make a mistake and just call. I think I'm missing a bit of value there, but obviously calling is not a horrible decision either. With ace 10 suited on the button, so I call, and then the limper calls. So you go three ways to a flop of 10-6-4. The limper checks, the hijack goes ahead and bets 25. Have a very easy call here, obviously, and then the limper folds. So we go heads up to a turn, which is the six of spades, giving us the backdoor nut flush draw. Then the hijack goes ahead and checks it to me. I think I definitely want to bet for value here. I think if my opponent had a stronger hand than ace 10, he would continue to barrel it to try and get paid off with his loose aggressive image. So I feel very confident I have the best hand. So when I go for a bit of value, I go ahead and bet 40, and then he calls. So we go to a river, which is the four of diamonds. So pairs the bottom pair on the board, the Hijack goes ahead and checks it to me, and I still want to continue to bet for value here. My logic that if I had the best hand on the turn, it still holds true here on the river. So I go ahead and bet 90 for value. Then my opponent hits the tank for probably a good 10 seconds before deciding to fold his hand. My opponent was kind enough to later tell me that he folded A6, which I don't believe because he would have turned a pair if that was the case and then check called. So obviously he made a good lay down on that river. I'm wondering if I could have got value from that hand by giving a better price, maybe sizing down to like 60 or something, but we we'll really, we'll never know. Next hand, a loose passive player limps under the gun 
then a loose aggressive player in the small blind makes a 15. I'm in the big blind with 6-5 off suit. I actually decide to call here. Obviously not a great hand, but getting a good price to call and playing position to the small blind under the gun calls as well. So we are three ways to a flop of king 7-5 rainbow. The small blind C bets 20. I actually think I have a pretty easy call here with my hand. I have three to a straight and a pair. Potentially the pair could be good. So I just throw in the call and then under the gun folds. We'll see a turn, which is the three of diamonds. So we do make a straight draw in addition to our pair, but the small blind does not let up. He goes ahead and bets 60, which is actually the size of the pot about. So he's obviously representing a very strong range of hands here. He could definitely have king, queen, ace, king. He could have a set. Eight, six is now a straight. He could have all those hands for sure. Obviously could have turned a backdoor diamond draw as well. Or he could just be bluffing with any old hand. This is a very loose, aggressive opponent. So I think here we do have to continue, even with the large sizing, with our straight draw and pair. Just because I know my opponent is capable of running a lot of bluffs here. But obviously somewhat concerned <laughs> that our third pair is not good here. But I do throw in the call. And we do see a river. It's a very interesting one. It is the five of diamonds. So we do make trips, but it brings in the backdoor diamond draw and also makes a bunch of full houses possible. Then my opponent hits the tank for about 20 seconds before betting out 140. So obviously this is a pretty big bet. It's almost the size of the pot. And we have a pretty interesting decision here with our trips. We do lose to the backdoor diamonds and all those uh, set type hands and straights that we lost to. On the turn as well, we still lose to those. Obviously if my opponent did have a hand like ace king or pocket aces, I think he would slow down on this river. So I don't think he has those hands anymore, but he might have those more stronger hands. That's why he's betting so big, but against a loose aggressive opponent, I really do think we have to put our foot down with certain parts of our range. And I definitely think trips is strong enough in our range to call with. So I throw in the call and then my opponent shows 4-3 offsuit. So very glad we put our foot down and we caught that bluff. So those were the most interesting hands we played during the session. Ended up buying into the game for 900 and cashing out for 1,594 for a very nice profit on the cash game. Ended up playing for six hours during the session, which brings our Aussie Millions 2020 challenge up to 66 hours out of the 150. And we're back at Crown today. We're about to go put in some more hours and get closer and closer to that 150. So now it's time for the gameplay grade. And I've been in a few different minds for my score for this session, but I think I've ultimately landed on a B plus. I really did want to downgrade myself originally for some of those mistakes I made, probably the most egregious of which was calling with the ace king on the river when my opponent had king queen. I don't think my hand's ever good there. And I think if I had a thought about it longer, I would have made the good fold, but sort of just saw the good price and call. So I think that's, a, that's probably the most egregious mistake. Obviously a few other mistakes in there, which we talked about. I don't really want to bump up my grade a bit as well for some of the other plays I made in other hands. I think for the most part pre-flop, I was playing very disciplined, sort of raising in good spots and folding in good spots. So I don't really, I'm not really totally unsatisfied with my play despite those few mistakes we did go over. So I think those mistakes are there, so I can't go to the A grade level, but those mistakes weren't so egregious that I want to punish myself too much. So B plus feels about right for this session. All right, so that's going to wrap up the vlog for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you get the Aussie Millions main event vlogs when they come out. I'm so excited to play this tournament and just vlog it for all you guys. I think it's going to be a world of fun and then it's going to be a world of pain when I bust, but we'll get that on the vlog for you guys. And I, I just can't wait to get through it. I'm so excited. So subscribe for that. For now, I'm going to grind some more 2-5 and I am out of here. Peace.